Father, we come before you now as your people in this place of worship. We know that your church, your body of believers, are spread across this land. I pray for wherever your body is meeting, that your anointing is upon those worship teams, upon the, the preaching of your word this morning. Father, that those that have come in and that do not know you would come into relationship with you. That those barriers would be torn down in their eyes and in their minds and in their hearts. That they would see the need for a Savior, the need to place their faith, hope, and trust in you, Jesus. I pray for the clarity of your word being preached this morning across this land, that your church would be edified by it, that the unbeliever would hear the hope and the joy and peace in you, Lord Jesus. But we've gathered here in this place wanting to honor and glorify you, that you change us, strengthen us. God, you are good. Thank you that we can come together you be exalted. You be glorified. I mightily, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
sing it, or if you did sing it and you meant it, welcome, welcome. You became a Christian because that's what we believe, amen? Uh, that's why we sing, that's why we shout, that's why we, we move, is because we want to worship the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, one of David's wives didn't appreciate what David did. What did he do? He danced before the Lord. I'm not asking you to dance this morning. What I'm asking is that, that you go outside of your safety zone. That you, that you don't be afraid of what God can do in your heart and your life. Step out and worship Him. Speak the name of Jesus over your family. Speak the name of Jesus in your life this morning. Amen? Amen. Just be outgoing. Just speak out those words of God's love, joy, peace, uh, and believe in Him. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning, if you have a uh, need, uh, what would like prayer? Uh, in my Bible reading this morning, we talked about the spot where uh, the, the apostles would, would pray over uh, pieces of cloth and they lay hands on it and then they bring it to somebody and they be healed. So you can stand in place of somebody else that needs prayer. Amen? Amen. Come forward and, and stand in place of somebody that you know needs a touch from God. And just believe in your heart for their healing uh, this morning. Let's just, let's just encourage one another and let God encourage us and let's praise His name. We want to thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and what you're going to do in this place. In Jesus' name.
Christ, that in Him all our needs are met. Our lives are changed. We are in a right relationship with You. We live with the hope and the anticipation of living eternally with You in heaven. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for the faith that you give us. Thank you for the love and the mercy. Father, may we be a people that are, are able to receive that and turn that to the people that you place in our lives. Father, you're good, you're holy. May the unity, may the fellowship of this body bring you joy, bring you life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us free one another.
we trust you taking care of us day in, week in, month in, all the time, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
garrison desiring to arrest me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in, in Christ who, 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up in the third heaven. And I, also, and I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of, uh, of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth, but I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me uh, to be or hears from me. What do we see happening here in this? Paul speaking of a man who was taken up 14 years ago into the third heaven. Okay? I believe he's talking about himself. He's talking about himself in a, in a third person. Okay? He's saying this, this individual is taken up to, up to the third heaven. Okay? When we hear third heaven, what do we think? How many heavens are there? You know, we can get into a discussion of that. Well, uh, when we step outside and we look to the sky, there's the first heaven. When we, at nighttime, we can see beyond our atmosphere, there's the second heaven, right? That, that physical space between us and the tip of our atmosphere, and then uh, space, the next frontier, not the final frontier, because we know the third heaven is the final frontier, amen? You don't get that as a Star Trek reference. Excuse me. Okay, but that third heaven is spiritual realm heaven. So this man Paul talks of was taken into that spiritual realm in this vision that was and he was receiving revelation from we believe Jesus Christ was speaking. He told him up, hey, this is this is the purpose I have for you. This is what you are going to speak about, but there's some things you, you aren't going to speak about. Okay, as it says in that next portion. We know that that's not only true for Paul. If you go back and read Daniel, there were things that was spoken to Daniel, and he said, no, just don't, nobody's going to know anything about this. Just take and eat this, this, uh, or excuse me, not him, that was John. Um, but there, there's places in time where people have been given a revelation, but it's not to be spoken of. Don't understand why God is who God is. Okay? But we also see in that next portion that he's taken up into paradise. Okay? So we have the third heaven, that spiritual heaven. We, we hear uh, paradise. Uh, where does that take you? Does that take you back to the Garden of Eden? Into that paradise? Does it take you to the, the thief on the cross, cross where he said to the, Jesus said to the thief, you'll be, today you will be with me in paradise? Well, Paul says he was taken up into paradise. He was taken up into the presence of Jesus. He was in the most holy of holies in the most beautiful of times, the most wonderful setting to receive these revelations. And, and it says, of that, of that experience, I would boast. Okay? But what does he go on to say? I will not boast except in my infirmities. I'll boast of what God had done in that vision, in that trance, in that situation. I will boast in, in those things of what God has done in that individual. But I will not boast of myself. I will boast of my infirmities. Now think about that for a second. How many of you are boasting for your infirmities today? It's not, <laughs> it's not boasting in the sense of Praise Jesus, I have a broken leg. Thank you, Father. It's the best deal ever. No. As we continue on in this, he's going to begin to explain why he uh, 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 will boast in his uh, infirmities. Okay? 
But the first thing that you ought to write down if you're taking notes, number one, we are to exalt Jesus Christ. That's it. Nothing to it, nothing beside it. We are to exalt Jesus Christ. We are to exalt God, first and foremost. In the assemblies of, or in our, in the assemblies of God, and, and I've incorporated it into this body as, as our mission statement, we are to exalt God, uh, edify the body, and evangelize the lost. Okay? We, we, our first endeavor, kind of the chicken and the egg thing, right? You know, what are we supposed to do first? We're supposed to exalt God. Okay? Kind of lines up with the two greatest commandments that Jesus spoke about. Lines up with what Paul says. Press, he always, he's constantly pressing us back to Jesus Christ to worship and glorify Him, exalt Him in all things. Right? But in that, as we exalt God, all of a sudden He starts pressing us back out to edify the body, to build one another up. But not just there. He, why, why should we be building building one another up? This isn't the service in here. I've said this before. This is not where you are doing service. Okay? We're ministering to one another. We should be sharpening one another. Okay? We should be asking pertinent questions that cause our brothers and sisters to go, hmm, I have never considered that before. Where would you find that? In, in, in the follow-up question, where would you find that in Scripture? Well, we better be able to find it in Scripture. If we don't, okay, we should be pressing ourselves, be pressing ourselves back into Scripture and say, okay, Lord, this question was raised. Is there Scripture in your Word that shows me what the truth is about this? Okay? So that's the edifying. Now, when we leave here, when we leave here, that's where the service begins. That's where we begin to do the service of Jesus Christ in our lives for those that he influences us, that, that we he put, brings into our lives. Okay? But point number one, we are to exalt Jesus Christ. That's our, that's our purpose in living. That is, that is what we have been called to do, and that's what we've been uh, born to do, created to do, to worship God. It's not to build up your, your uh, bank account. It's not to have the most toys of everybody else. It's not to have this, that, and the other thing. We have been created. We have been born. Paul understood this. And he didn't want people worshiping him, and he didn't want to be exalting himself. He was saying, we need to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ above all things. Okay? Secondly, our faith in the weak, our faith in weakness, pain, or struggle. Okay? It's not in the weakness, pain, or struggle. It's our faith while we are in weakness, pain, or struggle. Okay? While we are struggling. How many here are struggling? Nobody. Praise the Lord. I need to, we need to get other people in here. Okay? We need to go find people that are struggling. Okay? No, each one of us have, have issues. Each one of us has a struggle in our life. Okay? But that doesn't dictate your faith. That doesn't dictate your faith as we look at Paul. Okay? Continuing on to verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. Again, now he's saying, those the revelations that I speak of or that I bring, I'm not to be exalted for that. I'm, not, I, I'm just a messenger boy. I'm just bringing this word to you. Jesus is to be exalted. He gave them to me. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than uh, that the power of Christ 
may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities, in the reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, and distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Again, point number two, our faith in those times of weaknesses, pain, and struggle bears to witness our testimony of God's strength and faithfulness to us. Our faith in the moments of weakness, pain, and struggle bears in us the witness to God's strength and faithfulness. Now, isn't it interesting? <laughs> uh, how, how do we normally pray when we have an infirmity? When we have an issue? Lord, deliver me from this. Lord, completely heal me of this. Right? Right? That's, that's what we want to hear. Should we pray that? Sure. Sure. Lord, it should be prayed. Lord, if it's your will, bring a complete healing upon this individual. Lord, we thank you for the, the, the faith. We thank you for the strength that you are placing in this individual to walk through this as you do your will. Is that a prayer of faith? Shouldn't I be able just to declare, hey, God, they should be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shouldn't Paul have said that? Think of this. Think of this. Shouldn't Paul in this situation said, in Jesus' name, I cast this infirmity out of me. Should he? Should he? No, what does scripture say? He said, three times I prayed to God. Father, would you remove this from me? Father, would you remove this from me? <laughs> Father, <laughs> you're not hearing me. Would you remove this from me? Jesus only prayed once, right? <laughs> Father, if you could take this cup from me. Even Jesus had that inclination. He had that, Lord, Father, help. If you would, if you could take this cup from me, and not mine, will, but yours be done. Three times Paul prayed that. It wasn't until after that third time that he got his answer, right? He got his answer. God was saying, no, nope, that infirmity is there for you. What? Seriously, God? Now, I'm, I'm not going to get into what kind of infirmity it was, what kind of sorrow it was, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever it was. Uh, there's, some, there's a reference there, a messenger of Satan, uh, to buffet me. Now, that could have been, uh, you ever have a messenger of Satan come into your life? Somebody comes in and tells you that you're doing something dumb, right? You've never thought of them as a messenger of Satan? Okay? It, it might have been an actual person that would keep coming back to Paul and reminding him, hey, you see this weakness in you? You see this issue in your life? Do you see this in you? I do. I'm telling you, Paul, everybody else sees it. But our faith in that weakness, in that pain, in that struggle, bears witness to God's strength and faithfulness to us. Amen? It, 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 I'm not saying that, we, that, that uh, we can't pray for deliverance from infirmities and struggles and weakness and pain. I'm not saying we shouldn't. But can we begin to take on Paul's attitude here and say, Lord, I, I'm really not enjoying this. But Father, would you give me the strength to get through this? Would you give me <laughs> more so? Father, would you give me the strength to just get through this next hour? Because that's where I'm at. I want to be done. I just want to be done. But Lord, will you give me the strength to face this next hour of what I'm going to do?
What did that infirmity do? It reminded Paul. What did it remind Paul? It reminded Paul that he needed to be dependent upon Jesus Christ for the strength to see him through. That's the, that, that's, what did you say? Yeah, I think that's the beauty of infirmity, of struggle, of pain. That's the beauty of discipline. When we discipline a child, Yes, they cry, and sometimes may, they may say, I hate you, Mommy and Daddy. But at the, end of the, at, at the end of that sentence, who do they turn to? They turn to a loving father and mother. The discipline. Because they could sense there was this deep love. And that's the same deal that's going on in Paul's life. In our lives, we can, it, when these issues come, yes, it, it's terrible, it's rotten, it's... Uh, it's one of the number one questions people ask, right? Why is there suffering in this world? Or more uh, appropriately, if God is so powerful, if God is so loving, why does he allow people to suffer? Right? There's a dilemma. And you can go home and talk about it over, the, over your uh, dinner table, lunch table, whatever. But Jesus allowed, God allowed this infirmity in Paul's life to be a reminder to him to rely upon uh, God. And we, we hear, you know, this is uh, the statement that many of you have heard and, and probably have repeated numerous times in your life in that verse 9. Go ahead and look at it. Read it. My grace is sufficient for you, my, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said earlier in one of his letters, he said, you know what? God is using the foolish to confound the wise, right? God is using the weak to frustrate the strong. God's, God's wanting us to be in a position that the world would know he can't do it. Dan cannot do that. And yet Dan's willing to do that. Because at the end of it, you and I would say, I have no idea how I accomplished this. I have no idea. In reality, we would end up saying, it was because of what God did in me. This was all God. You're right. I'm not capable of what just took place. But God's capable of using me to get that accomplished. And you see that that's the heart of Paul. He's saying, you know, <laughs> yes, I have this thorn. Yes, I have this issue. But you know what? In, in the grace of God, I have the sufficiency to accomplish what God has called me to. My strength is made perfect in weakness. God's looking for us to be willing to be weak, that his strength would perfect us in that weakness. And what does he do? Verse 10. Think about this. Think, think about this. Therefore I take pleasure in, in uh, excuse me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. When you first think of Paul, don't you think of this? confident, bold individual that can conquer all things, right? <clears throat> Think about the humility in this statement. Think about where, where he has already begun to uh, position himself in his faith with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> He's realized, I'm nothing. I've got this infirmity, I've got this thorn in my side. At times he says, I'm not a great speaker. I don't know about that. But he says, I take pleasure in the infirmities, the reproaches, the, those that attack me, that I can't defend, and the needs, in the persecutions, the beatings he took. And if we were to go back into verse 11, 
uh, verses uh, 20 through uh, 29, you'd be able to read everything. He, he lists off everything that's been done to him. The shipwrecks, the beatings, the, the whippings, the uh, stonings, all of that. And think about what he's saying. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities. In that. And he finishes off that portion. For when I am weak, then I am strong. There's another paradox in following after Jesus Christ. Okay? Think about it. In order to live, what must you do? Die. Okay? In order to be strong, you must be... That's backwards, isn't it? That's backwards. In order to be strong, you should be strong. Right? No. No. God knows how fragile and how fickle humanity is. Another point, or another thought on our faith uh, in the weakness, pain, and struggle bears witness to God's strength and faithfulness. I want to say is, do we realize that we're passing through the temporal? I think Paul realized that. We're just passing through this temporal. Okay? Yes. Every person uh, is, uh, is, we've never met a mere mortal, right? Everybody's going into eternity. But when we come into Jesus Christ, we have died to ourselves. Christ lives in us, right? There's the hope, okay? That whether we live or die, it's for the glory of God. Have we come into that realization? Have you come into this realization that as a follower of Jesus Christ, your yearning is not to get to the age of 90, 86, 97. That's not the yearning. The yearning is, Lord, be exalted in my life. Be exalted in my life. You show up. Whether I live to be 99 years old, or if I die tomorrow, Lord, you're my prize. I, it doesn't matter what's going on in my life, Lord, you're my prize. The mindset, I, and I think of uh, uh, Keith Green. Remember, he died in that plane accident. I think he lived with that mentality. It, it's, it's not, you know, I'm not saying uh, once you attain a certain level of that, oh, yes, I'm going to live forever. God will take you at that moment. I'm not saying that. But I think, I, I, I can confidently say, Keith was ready. He was ready. I think he was ready months before then. Whether he lived or died, Christ Jesus lives in him. And he lives in Jesus Christ. And we come to that, and we are just passing through the temporal. We're anticipating the eternal. We're anticipating stepping across that threshold. Um, years back, I don't know if Lori or Luann sang it, but was, there was a song called Everybody Wants to Go to Heaven but Nobody Wants to Die, right? Or there was a line like that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to go to heaven, amen? Yeah. yeah. How many of you want to die to get there? Mm, not yet. Give me a few more years, Father. Right? But Paul had the understanding. He understood in the affirmities that we are given. In this temporal life that we live, it is all meant to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the last, uh, last little bit I want to touch on is, uh, we're going to drop down to verse 19. Again, do you think that we excuse ourselves to you? We speak before God in Christ. But we do all things, beloved, for your edification. 
in everything that he's been saying here, everything I've shared with you, uh, Church of Corinth, everything I've shared, shared with you, Church of uh, Casino and some of you God, I've, I've done for your edification. I've done it to build you up. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you as such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish. <laughs> uh, kind of a Bilbo Baggins statement there. Um, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, uh, selfish ambitions, backbites, whispering, conceits, tumults. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you. And I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the cleanness, uh, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. Everything he's saying, he's saying, I'm doing this to build you up, to cause you to become a better believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, to be a greater follower of God. And then dropping down to 13, I'm going to... Uh, Drop down verse 10 in chapter 13. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness, according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. God's word, in this case Paul's letter, the authority of scripture is to edify. It's to build you up. It's to cause conviction in your life. As you read through God's Word, not just skimming through it and saying, hey, I read it, but saying, Lord, as I read through this, let your Spirit speak to me. There should be a level of conviction. Conviction causes what? Guilt, remorse, a recognition of, Lord, I'm not hitting the mark in this area. Father, forgive me in this. Lord, who do I need to go and apologize to? Do I need to go and apologize to anyone? How, how do I make this right? It's meant to build us up. And in, in going back to the infirmities, what, what does that mean? What, uh, in James it says, uh, you know, consider pure joy when trials and tribulations come, right? Why? It causes perseverance. It causes your character to rise up to be a man and woman of God as you ought to be. That's what Scripture does. I think sometimes we look through Scripture. Uh, a lot of times we look through Scripture uh, finding the verses that would be great to attack the guy that just attacked us, right? Oh, this, this, oh man, this fully applies to Karen. I hope she reads this. In fact, this is her Bible. <laughs> X, 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 X. All right, there we go. She should get that. In fact, I'll just leave it on the pillow. There you go. Okay. Or, man, this really applies to um, this guy, man. He was a jerk. But this, you know, um, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. <laughs> yeah, that's you. That's you, Jack. Not you, Jack. Just Jack in general. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> i got to be careful with the names like you. Okay. Uh, but you, get, you see what I'm saying? Sometimes we look at Scripture and say, how can I attack somebody else? Instead of saying, Lord. <laughs> Lord, look at me. The heart of David. What did he say? Search me in what? Find what? No wicked way. No offensiveness in my life. When the last time we prayed that? In the times of prayer. Lord, search me. Find no offensive way in me. Search me out, God. When's the last time we closed our mouth and listened for him to search and see? But <laughs> well, we've been called to exalt Jesus Christ. Even in our weaknesses, even in our pains, uh, pain is meant to draw us back to God, realizing we cannot do it without him. He, in his grace, in him, uh, causes, it, causes us to be strong. Amen? And we go after God's word, the authority. It's meant to build us up. Let's be a people that not only are edified by God's word, but we build one another up. We don't tear people down. We build one another up.
Heavenly Father, we come to you now, and I just pray for the heart, uh, Lord, that through all of this, it depends on a relationship with you. It depends that you sending your son, Jesus Christ, that, that all who are convicted in, in sin by your Holy Spirit can cry out to you and say, Jesus, forgive me. God in heaven, forgive me. And you do, you're faithful and just to forgive for those who confess their sin. I thank you that when we confess Jesus, you as our Lord, we are forgiven. I thank you, Jesus, that when we walk in you, we have the hope, uh, we have the victories already, and yet you give us the spirit to have the strength as Paul <laughs> to walk through the tribulations, struggles, infirmities that come our way. Father, may each person here know you. May the one that is making that decision, even in this moment, saying, Jesus, I need your forgiveness. Come into my life. Thank you. Thank you. Saints of God, followers of Jesus, we need a Paul to come into our lives and address those issues. More so, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to allow the, the spirit of liberty and the freedom to search us, to find no offensive way in us. Not that we're perfect, but in Christ Jesus, we are made perfect. We are made strong. We are made holy. And in the humility of all the men and women before us, that have humbled themselves before glorious and good God. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you give us your spirit to live in strength, in peace. As we leave this place now, oh God, for those that have given their heart to you, Lord, I, I pray that they tell somebody about it. Share it with several people of that decision. Lord, cause your spirit to do that in their life. As we leave this place, as your followers, around the tables, around the workplace, wherever we are found, Lord, may our testimony, may our testimony be heard that it is Christ in us that makes us who we are. And we love you, O oh God, for that. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The altar is open. If you want to come spend time.